Hey guys, uh, welcome to part two of this however many part series it turns out to be, I'm not really sure yet. Um, I am starting from a different spot than I left off last time, just because I decided that UI didn't really have much potential for anything. So I think in this tutorial I'm just going to build a really simple UI with a push button, a line edit, and maybe a label. My thinking is maybe to just make a simple file browser uh, as our first tutorial. That way I can kind of introduce you guys to some of the basic UI concepts without really overwhelming um, you guys with complexity because because this will be a really simple UI you'll be able to see the code and it'll make a lot of sense I think um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is relabel this to um, I don't know maybe file path and that's just a label it's just kind of to denote what this uh, line edit does and then I'm going to extend this out a little bit, kind of line things up a bit. I'm going to call this um, maybe browse. Um, and that's that's really it. I'm I'm really going to probably just leave it at that. I think for for the sake of this tutorial, um, as far as just the visual aspects of things. I might move these up a little bit. I'm just hitting my arrow key, by the way, to move things around. I think that's probably the easiest way of making sure things are lined up correctly. And one thing I want to do real quick before I move on to the programming side of this is maybe change some of these object names. And what these are are the actual names you're going to refer to in the Python code. So if you make moderately complex UIs, I would um, highly recommend that you get really organized with how you label things because it'll get really confusing really fast if you don't. So um, I'm going to actually kind of label these like they are in uh, like what they do. So like maybe uh, label underscore file path. Something like that kind of help me remember what each thing is. Let's just call this a uh, file uh, input file path input something like that, and then call this browse button. something like that and then once I'm done I'm going to just uh, save this to where I've been saving it which is kind of like my tutorials folder so I'm just save hit, hitting save and then I've already kind of set this up so that I don't have to spend a bunch of time figuring it out um, this is kind of the I don't want to say tricky part but it's sort of annoying that it's not easier um, so basically what I did, uh, is I searched for this, uh, PySide UIC script and it should be in your Python 2.7, uh, folder slash scripts. Um, and it's called, uh, Python UIC, uh, PySide dash UIC.exe and it's the program that converts your UI file to an actual Python executable so you can start actually seeing your UI do something rather than just have it be in this designer program. So um, the first thing you have to do is actually go to that path which is, uh, actually I'll just do it from scratch so I can walk you through it all the way. So um, what I did is I went in here, PySide UIC, 
Um, and the easiest way I think to do this is just to drag that into here so that it copies the whole path for you, which makes it kind of easy. And then um, you're going to type the path to where you actually saved your .ui file. Uh, in my case, I saved it in kind of a labyrinth, so bear with me for a second. I'm going to get rid of this because that was what I did before. Um, and then you're going to just drag that file in here and it'll copy the whole path to it. Um, and then you do dash O. Whoops, not zero. O. And then you type in the path to where you want to save it. Um, in this case, I'm going to save it in the same directory that I'm actually in. So I'm just going to type ui.py. So it has to be .py because it's a Python file. And then last but not least, dash x, which you don't have to do, but I'm going to do because it makes it easier to kind of show what's going on because it uh, creates a little system that allows you to actually run your UI before you even connect up any of the code. So it, it's kind of handy. So I'm going to hit enter and that'll run. And then as you see over here, it just generated this UI file. And let me open that up so you guys can see. So basically, um, as you can see, it generated an actual Python file. This Python file can actually be run right now because I did that dash x um, command. So if I drag that in here, uh, where'd it go? I'm not sure what just happened. One second. Let me try doing it like this. There we go. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not sure why it's not running. Alright, I kind of screwed up something on my computer settings, so it actually opened up Sublime Text when I was trying to run this Python program for whatever reason. I'll figure that out later. So all I did is I typed in Python first, and then I dragged this right in front of it, and then hit enter, and that runs it, and it's a little form, super simple, file path, browse doesn't do anything, because it's not hooked up to any sort of functionality in the back end yet, um, and that's really it right now, um, that's how simple it is, uh, there's not a whole lot to say about it, but I can kind of walk you through what the components in the code do. Um, so first of all, we're setting the object name of the actual window itself to form, and that's, I think, why the window name is form. So if you see this, it's actually called form because you're setting that right there. You're setting its window size to this many pixels by this many pixels. That's width and height. Um, you're setting the browse button. You're actually like instantiating it right here. You're setting its geometry, which is a rectangle. So you're setting like its um, position and its width and height. That's what that is. And then you're setting its object name. This is what you're actually going to refer to uh, to be able to access its properties later on. I'll get into that in a bit. Um, and then uh, you're setting, this is your local variable to access it. Um, you're setting properties on that local variable. And you're repeating that for each of the different UI components up until this point. Um, and then you're calling retranslate UI, which is actually moving the different components of the UI or no, it's not moving it, it's it's uh, initializing each of the components of UI, um, kind of setting them up. This stuff, I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but it, it's not that important because this is just setting up how the view actually looks, and that's one of the reasons I don't like writing this by hand, because it's kind of complicated and a lot of work for something that you can actually do just automated, and then uh, 
actually connecting up useful components to it is what you should be spending your time on, not building this. But having a um, reasonable understanding of what's going on is, is definitely necessary. And then this is what that dash X um, flag added to the bottom of this this page. Uh, it added this if na name equals main, which is just testing if you're running this script from this script. Uh, and if it's if you are, then it's going to actually execute the application itself. But if you're not, it won't execute this at all. So you won't get duplicate uh, versions of this window popping up if you actually import this um, user interface into a different class or something. So that's pretty much what I'm going to cover, what I uh, will cover in this part of the tutorial. And in the next tutorial, I think I'm going to actually go into um, building this into an actual useful application that does something, like opens up a file dialog or something like that. Um, that way we can start getting into actually making something that could do something potentially. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or if you uh, are confused by anything. Um, Rate and subscribe. Thank you.